Hi, I'm Jim Billy 6 lg for Ham Radio Basics. Welcome to my radio room here on Wolf Mountain. A neighbor of mine and I have bought um, a bunch of these microphones. I bought three. I don't know why. Um, this one I bought on Monday because it was on sale on Amazon, including um, this suspension mount, uh, an XLR cable, and uh, a foam cover, including shipping, it was $11. There are several versions of this mic. One of them looks like this. It's called a BM800. Um, it appears to be, there, there's, there may be five or six different versions of these on Amazon.com, all for about 18 to 20 dollars uh, for just the basic mic and a couple of other pieces like the uh, suspension part. The guts of the microphone uh, look like this and there is an electric cartridge or condenser cartridge uh, behind that screen. The diameter of this is about, it's in a plastic housing, but it's about 5 eighths of an inch. Uh, below that is a circuit board that appears to be a mic preamp and it has a voltage regulator on it. This one's labeled 5 volts, um, so it needs 5 volts. Most transceivers can easily supply the low current requirements for this and the voltage. Um, and in this housing it, it slides in the bottom and there's a piece that goes in, in to hold it in place. Of the three mics I have, that screw in piece is, is different on each one. Uh, what they do have in common is an XLR connector at the bottom and what I did was take this one apart so I could figure out what pin does what. So I'll bring up a slide um, on uh, on the screen that I drew in Photoshop of. Okay this is a, a diagram of the mic connector on the front of the ICOM 7300 and the bottom of the microphone uh, itself uh, that has and that is an XLR connector. On the ICOM mic connector where they're using the 8 pin style uh, metal uh, heavy duty mic connector uh, the pin out or connections to the pin is roughly the same as it was uh, 20 30 years ago. Pin number one and they're and they're labeled if you look closely with a magnifying glass you probably can see it. So Pin number one is the audio going into the transceiver. Um, pin number seven is the shield. So if you wanted to have a mic cable and only a mic cable, you'd use pin seven for the shield and pin one for the uh, uh, center conductor, and that would be the, the microphone. Uh, if voltage is needed, there's voltage available at pin two, and that happens to be eight volts in the case of ICOM transceivers. Uh, other brands have different voltages and others uh, do the voltage connection in a different way also. On the XLR connector there is no push to talk so there's the shield which is pin number one and pin number two is the audio and pin three is the voltage. And the voltage has to be what uh, at least as much as the microphone company has specced out. So if their literature says um, let's say 8 volts, It's you better have the 8 volts. The brown lines below the two circles that are labeled my connector and XLR connector um, is just a brief look at the wiring. We're going to use um, three conductors from the, sh from the XLR connector to the mic connector. So uh, on, the, uh, front of the, on the front of the ICOM 7300, pin number one uh, on that mic connector will go to pin number two on the XLR connector. Now here's where a problem arose as I was building this thing. I was told by a couple of different sources, KG0J and a couple of others, that the pin on the uh, ICOM, IC7300, and as far as my friends know, all of the ICOM transceivers, that that pin has voltage on it. What's the reason for that? Well, it allows you to connect a condenser microphone by using just two wires. Uh, the mic voltage and the mic audio connect together to pin one. So it's a common mode 
uh, idea. The audio is AC and that goes right through a little blocking capacitor. Uh, the voltage is DC and it's stopped by that uh, uh, blocking capacitor. Why do that? Um, as far as ICOM goes, they've almost always had electric type microphones. If you were to take your uh, expensive dynamic mic and connect it to um, pin number one and pin number seven, you might damage the transceiver and you might damage the microphone because it might be seeing the winding um, of the uh, 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 dynamic mic and so it may be some number of ohms to ground so what you'd be doing is you'd take, be taking the voltage from pin 1 to ground probably blowing out that uh, regulator that develops the 8 volts and worse than that, probably other stuff behind that 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 helps uh, create the eight volts could be could be a lot of different things. Uh, in any case, it's something you don't want to do. I don't see it in the instruction book, by the way. I've looked and looked and looked, and maybe I'm missing it, but I sure don't see it there anywhere. So again, the point is, pin one, the mic connector on the front of the uh, ICOM 7300 not only receives the audio from the microphone, it puts out voltage and so you've got to be careful what you hook up to that. So uh, those are the connections that um, you will use to make the mic connector mate with the XLR connector. Keeping in mind you're going to need a capacitor between pin 1 and 2 as shown in the diagram. The value of the capacitor should be somewhere around um, uh, one, um, sorry, one microfarad. Uh, now, for that capacitor, you could use uh, a non-polarized electrolytic, maybe 15 volts, 20 volts. The voltage doesn't matter much, uh, and one microfarad. Um, and the place to stick that the capacitor is in the XLR connector, because there's plenty of room inside that thing. Alright, I tinned the, the three wires, which meant I took the soldering tip, touched it to the wire, held it there for a few seconds, and put on, float on a little bit of solder. Um, I did the same thing with the connectors, both the XLR and the 8-pin connector uh, that goes into the front of the IC7300. Makes it easier to attach the wires, so when the time comes, it's all ready to go. That's the strain relief that I used and I had to stick another strain relief inside of it because the diameter of the wire that I ended up using was smaller. That's the XLR connector and uh, that's the mess on my desk. So there's the um, wire fed through the strain relief uh, in through the XLR connector and out the top ready to attach and I did the um, uh, XLR connector. Um, Um, and there's the finished product. That's the XLR connector with the wires installed. By the way, we ended up using Mono Price, M-O-N-O-P-R-I-C-E, uh, cables, and they turned out to be really good uh, from Amazon. That's the connector, the 8-pin connector for the front of the K3. I intentionally made the um, heat shrink really stiff coming out of the back into that, and that is the phono jack on a pigtail to connect to his uh, foot switch. I made that connector really stiff so that the wires uh, coming out the back can't move. They're, they're really locked in place because I didn't want a wire to break loose on the inside and short the, uh, the, the pin 2 to anything else in there because pin 2 has got voltage on it. And as a matter of fact, so does pin 1 from what I've read. Again, if you're hooking up a dynamic microphone, you need to put in a capacitor between the one uh, pin one on the mic connector and pin two on the XLR. Otherwise, you could end up damaging the uh, ICOM transceiver. All right, that's it. Um, it turned out to be a, a little bit harder project than I thought it was going to be. It took a lot more time. I did it over about three days. 
If you have any questions, post the question below. If you know the answer to a question that someone has put down there, uh, please answer. Um, if you haven't subscribed, uh, please do subscribe. Again, this was how to connect a an electret microphone or condenser microphone to the ICOM 7300. And by the way, um, these microphones work great. It's the one I'm currently using for narration, and uh, like I said, I, I bought three of them. I've been using them on several projects, and they work really well. 73 for now. I'm Jim W6LG. Thanks for joining me. See you the next time. Bye-bye.